What are preload, prefetch, preconnect, DNS prefetch, and fetch priority? And when should each of these be used? A lot of these get confused, but let's walk through each of these and try and sort out when you use each of these and how you should use each of these. So all of these are different directives that tell the browser to prioritize and fetch resources from your page, but they differ in what exactly they do and they differ in how exactly they work. So let's go through each one by one, starting out with preload. Preload tells the browser that the specified resource should be downloaded with a higher priority. So this is not a hint. You are telling the browser to do this. As a result, using this incorrectly can waste a lot of bandwidth. It can even be harmful for performance. I've seen a lot of websites where they're using this incorrectly, and as a result, they're making their website load slower. It should only be used for really critical items that are essential when loading the page. For example, you might want to use this to load the main style sheet or a critical font file or a key JavaScript file. Here's an example of the code for this. And this code for preload will preload the main style sheet.css. So right, this link tag is telling the browser to treat that main dash style sheet.css with really high priority when loading it on the page. And in that case, it makes sense. This is our CSS file. We wanna make sure that gets loaded so that way the page can render appropriately for our visitors. Next, we have fetch priority. Fetch priority is an attribute that you can add and it gives the browser a hint that a specific resource should be moved up or down the priority order. You can set this to high, you can set this to low. For example, there may be a particular image that should be given a high priority because of how important it is to the page's content. Maybe it's the main image on our page. Keep in mind that fetch priority is only a hint, so the browser can ignore this. This code shows you how you would set the fetch priority of an image. We have our normal image tag, and then we have an attribute added for fetch priority. In this case, fetch priority is set to high. Next, we have prefetch. So prefetch tells the browser to fetch resources that might be needed in the future, but they aren't needed right now. This is considered a low priority, and the resource may not be loaded at all if bandwidth is limited. For example, if somebody's visiting with a really slow connection, the browser is likely to just ignore this command altogether. As a way to think about where you would use this, think about a paginated sequence on your website. Maybe you have a category page, page one, page two, and so on. So you might want to prefetch page two when somebody's on page one. So that way page two is ready, just a little bit faster when people click to it. That's what this example code shows. We have a link tag with the rel set to prefetch, and then in the href attribute, we're setting the URL that we want the browser to prefetch. In this case, category, question mark, page equals two, the second page of our paginated sequence. The next tag we have is a preconnect. So a preconnect opens a connection to another domain. You don't need to use this for your own domain. By the time somebody's looking at your website, they've already connected to your domain. So we don't need a preconnection here. A preconnect tells the browser to prepare a network connection to some other domain, but it doesn't fetch any resources from that domain. You can kind of think of this like opening up a door to that other domain, but you're not going into the door at this point. For example, this code will pre-connect to Google Fonts. So we have our link tag with a rel set to pre-connect, and then we set our href to the domain. In this case, fonts.googleapis.com. The next thing we have is DNS prefetch. So this is similar to pre-connect, but it only resolves the DNS information. That means it's only translating the domain name into an IP address. And that saves a step along the way but it doesn't make a full connection to the domain like a pre-connect does. If we think about pre-connect as maybe opening the door, in the case of a DNS prefetch, we're only unlocking that door. So this is a lighter version of pre-connect. You'd wanna use this when you know you'll need to connect to a domain in the future, but that connection isn't as critical. This might be useful connecting to a third-party resource that visitors might click to next, like a third-party payment system. For example, this code will prefetch the DNS for somedomain.com. We have our link tag with the rel set to DNS prefetch, and then the href is set to that domain, in this case, somedomain.com that we want to connect to. All right, we covered a lot of ground with all of these, so let's recap here real quick. Preload should be used for critical resources for the current page, and that 
says to the browser that these resources should be loaded with the highest priority. Fetch priority influences the fetch order of individual resources, but it's only a hint, so you want to use this for fine tuning, but know that the browser might ignore it. Prefetch should be used for resources that are needed in the future. This is given the lowest priority by the browser, so it might be ignored. We have pre-connect, which establishes a connection to another server. Never use this for your own website. Good for third-party resources though, like connecting to a font library. DNS prefetch only performs a DNS lookup. It's helpful to use for less critical third-party resources. Now, none of these are guaranteed to help your website. In fact, they can make your website worse if you don't know what you're doing with them or if they're not used correctly. But if used appropriately, they can help make your website load faster. So when you're adding these tags, be sure to test carefully to understand how they're going to impact your site's performance. Make sure that you're only using them in a way that is for the benefit of your website's performance. For more details about each of these and more information in general about optimizing your website speed, you may want to check out my book, Speed Metrics Guide. It walks through each step of the website loading process and talks about different ways that you can make your website load faster each step of the way. If you have any questions about improving your website speed, let me know. I help clients with this kind of stuff all the time. You can email me at matthew at If you liked this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.